Hi everyone, it's Em and Liv, and we're your meta sidekicks. Today we're going to be talking about auras, because everybody wants to know about auras, so that's what we're here for. We're your sidekicks to everything metaphysical, so we're going to give you what you want, what the people need. So I know you've done this, but read my aura. God damn it. Do it in, in extreme detail this time, I'm ready for it. Extreme detail? Yeah, like if you're giving someone an aura reading, do it for me. Well, we just got done talking about some really deep things, and you have a lot of pink around you now. Oh, God. <laughs> it's really cute. <laughs> uh, yes. Because before it was what? Well, it's green and yellow. Yeah, it still is green and yellow, but we just got done talking about the stuff that's causing the green and yellow, and I love you, and I think you love me, and now <laughs> there's lots of pink. Because <laughs> what's going to get you through the green and yellow is the pink. Yeah, so then what is green and yellow? Green right now is M's love towards material things, such as other people or objects, earthly things. Um, and the yellow is her anxiety around the love of her earthly objects and things and people. So there's a lot of things going on about those colors right now. Yeah, because I'm in my late 20s and uh, there's a lot of things with physicality, like getting new jobs, getting new whatever like houses marriage babies fucking human shit yeah and she's real anxious about all of those things yeah um and the colors are presenting on her uh, from the elbows down down to her hands so everything that she touches whether that be things that touch her heart or things that touch the material world so it's really cute but she's grounded because her feet have a lot of dark red for moldahara chakra and your knees, from your knees down to your shins, is gray. So you're reflecting a lot of things. Or I'm pushing them into the earth. Probably. Interesting. So, it's interesting. I don't know. When you say that my feet are red, I really just think of me as Toph. It's really just the soles of your feet, though, that are red. Like, they yeah. match our couch right like now. Like Toph. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it with putting her feet on the ground. Yeah. It's cute. So, uh, yeah, one of the things that I do is I use the earth as like a battery. So I pull the energy from the earth to make myself more grounded. I also push the energy, the excess anxiety energy into the ground. Maybe that's why I don't get so exhausted from doing readings is because usually when I use my feet to ground myself, I'm pushing the energy in my body into the ground, not up taking the energy from the ground into me. It's the opposite. Well, it's both. You use it as a battery. You don't hold the energy. You allow it to flow through it. Well, it's I like always push energy. I push energy from my body into the earth, whereas you say that you cr get energy from the earth into you. Yeah. I do the other side. I do the opposite. I've never, like, tried to get energy from things. I always put my anxiety into things because I have too much energy. Oh, because, you, well, you're getting energy from spirits. Yeah. So usually when I do readings, I get all worked up. But when you say that we do readings, Em's been sitting in on my readings, guys. <laughs> <laughs> because we figured out that one of the ways in which I was able to fine tune my mediumship abilities is by listening in on my mom's readings when I was little. Because she used to do psychic fair readings and things like that as a medium. Which I still want to do. We're going to. <laughs> yeah. COVID is a bitch, and but she's got Halloween two faces. Halloween is a thing, so there should be some psychic fairs. You should take a look. We will. <laughs> well, we have a lot of balancing of, like, money things, too, because we're trying to hire a person. So A person. A person. She shall who not be named until yeah. said until employee. Patreon. So. So. I just think it's interesting that as a developing medium, you're trying to draw energy to. Oh. From the That earth makes sense. Because it takes a lot of energy out of you whereas me as a medium the souls give me energy and i have to put it into the earth otherwise yeah. it overwhelms me it's like the opposite twin flame shit guys <laughs> <laughs> well it makes sense because a lot of the, a lot of the energy that i use is trying to figure out i don't know trying to make the connection because the connection is so far away for me yeah and we're so, going to talk about that because it's why astral I have to, plane. Yeah, that's why I have to use energy. It makes sense. That's really strange. <laughs> it's like you have to draw energy into your body to push your astral plane out in order to meet your psychic plane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to get that connection. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> but I pull everything in and then push it through to the ground. 
Well, I also try I don't to... even think you pull it in. I think they do it. No, they for give it you. to me. Yeah, yeah. But it's so close. Yours is drawing but, energy yeah. from the earth to push. But everything out. is so close to you. So you, it's like <laughs> you, it's like you're a smaller glass, and I'm like a big soup mug. Soup mug. Those things are great. Yeah. Oh God. Now <laughs> so I, I gotta want, like, fill a... my soup mug up. Now I want like a little veggie pot pie. It's fall time now, so every time I see her, she's like, "What kind of soup can I eat today?" <laughs> Soup and bread, cozy things. My gosh. We're talking about auras, not soup. <laughs> <laughs> so what are auras? Auras are the electromagnetic frequency or chi that is surrounding physical things. And most people like to say that it's living things, but electromagnetic frequencies on a scientific level are the energetic frequencies that particles emit depending on the state that they are existing at. So that goes into like solid liquid gases. Those particles exist at different frequencies to make up certain types of matter, basically. So the particles that create you are what emit electromagnetic frequency that is perceived as your aura. So auras can change based on your emotional state as well as your physical state because emotions are a frequency of energy, but the way that your body exists on a particle level is also connected to the frequencies in which your body emits. So if you're not feeling good, those frequencies are going to be fizzucked up because your cells, up. your cells are like, oh my God, we're under attack from our self or foreign bodies. We have to change. Yeah, so. there's a lot of people that came on. We had an aura video go viral on TikTok, and we had a lot of like religious people come in and are like, "You should repent. This is speaking to Satan." And it's like electromagnetic fields is what auras are. It has nothing to do with religion because it's literally the electromagnetic field that you give off, and all objects are able to give off this electromagnetic field. This why magnets work it's why the earth has attracted the moon to revolve around it but because we are a conscious being we're a very complex being we have energy centers within our bodies which are the chakras and these are affected by your physicality your emotions your spirit and that changes how your electromagnetic field is versus like a rock has a very consistent aura because they don't have all of these crazy energy centers. I think it's interesting because auras are related to your chakras. In our chakra video and podcast, we say that you have eight main chakras. You have millions or thousands of chakras all across your body, but the center points of your chakras are the main chakras, which are consistent down your head to your spine, basically. And your auras are supposed to reflect your chakras. So there are different layers to your auras. Like an ogre has layers like an onion. I really like to say like a pride cake because I really love those videos of people oh that gosh. say that they're coming out to their family and they like give their family a rainbow cake. That's cute. It's That's so fun time. cute. I love it. So think of your aura as a pride cake. And each, I what did I call it? I think I called it. Um, each layer. Well, it was a layer, but yeah, each layer <laughs> is consistent with your chakras. So the layer closest to your body is going to be consistent to your muldahar or your root chakra. And it's supposed to be a red color. See, this is where I start to go off on tangents because it drives me crazy. Because it, would make, it wouldn't make sense if each layer of your aura would be the same color because how would someone like read your aura if they were always just a rainbow being emitted off of you yeah so each layer of your aura deals with a different chakra but consistent with the westernized views of chakra i don't know thought um is that there's three separate planes in which your chakras can exist and in those three different planes there are certain layers of your aura that can be perceived and they correlate to certain chakras. So the first physical plane or the plane, the first plane that people can see of auras is called the physical plane. And it's made up of the etheric plane, your emotional body and your mental body. So the etheric plane deals with your Muldahar chakra. And it's also known as the lower aspect. It is supposed to be able to perceived, be perceived 
clairvoyantly <laughs> closest to your your body. So it's like one to three inches or one to three, yeah, one to three inches from your body. And it deals with your Muldahar chakra. Now, the next layer, the emotional body, or also known as the lower emotional aspect, is supposed to be related to your Svadashana chakra. So that one is, I think they said three to four or three to five inches away. So the next layer from your body. And then the mental body is also known as the lower mental aspect. And that one deals with your solar plexus or Manipura chakra. And those three are the ones that make up the first three layers of the aura that people are supposedly able to perceive clairvoyantly. And that is known as your physical plane. Which is why it's easier for you to see because it deals with your physical self and not your like spiritual self. Yes. So at the beginning of the podcast, Em's like, what's my aura? What's my aura? Yeah. <laughs> those are the things that you saw, right? Yes, because those are the things within your, your physical plane, those three layers that and- I saw. Um, with those three, it is essentially your physical body, the like electromagnetic field that your physical body is giving off. It's also your subconscious mind and your conscious mind. So I think that's pretty interesting because you'll get into the other planes and it's kind of the same thing for your spiritual self as well. But those are also the things that are physically and emotionally dealing with you right now. Yeah. Which is cute. It's interesting. So when people read your aura in the physical plane, it explains things that are like you're dealing with right now. And those are the things that are like constantly changing. Yes. So when I get all rowdy about when people ask me, what's my aura? I want to be like, Ezekiel, fuck you. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Uh, It's because your auras always change. And I think that it's very rude or and like change very drastically because we just filmed a video like an hour ago and my aura was different than it is right now yeah because my emotions changed (laughs) yes so if someone tells you i can tell you your aura and this is constant that's dumb because it's always changing at least within the physical plane but i would assume it also changes in the astral and spiritual plane as well depending on where you are in your well that's different as as a human yeah because uh I feel like your spiritual plane is connected to a lot more than your physical body. Yes. Yeah. So. It's interesting. All right. So the next plane is the astral plane. And this aura layer is made up of the astral body, which I think is interesting. And it is supposed to be consistent with your heart or Anahata chakra and consistent with Western idea of chakra thought is that the heart chakra is green. (laughs) Well, okay, what I like to explain is people think that the heart chakra is green because it deals with human love and physical love because there's a difference between love and there's a difference between unconditional love. So one of the conditions in our realm to love someone is that they have to exist physically. So that's why people have such a hard time with losing loved ones is because that condition is a hard one for people to like wrap their minds around. That is the green version of love. Whereas the unconditional love is the blue version of love because it transcends physicality. It is unconditional love. It's limitless. So it it reaches the sky. Literally does not have that condition of you must be here for me to love you. (laughs) Yeah, it's really cute. So Em and I think that unconsistently with western chakra thought that the heart chakra is blue but it can be green too so but it makes sense that it's the astral plane because that's the what it's the border between your physical existence and your spiritual existence so like when people astral project from their body they are separating their consciousness from their physical body to transcend into the spiritual realm yeah so That love aspect, the difference between love and unconditional love, is the binding point in which is the physicality and spirituality. So I think it's interesting that it's your astral plane and it's your heart chakra. And I think your heart is what either grounds you to the physical world or allows you to reach a higher spiritual consciousness. It's that idea of sympathy versus empathy and material love versus unconditional transcending love. So then what's my astral plane? Uh. <laughs> Your astral plane is green right now. <laughs> yeah. But it has I'm a lot of with physicality. It has a lot of pink around it. 
Makes sense. And yellow. Yours is pink and purple. And white. <laughs> and white. I, I wanted to say that, but also I was like, that's what your ring looks like. <laughs> so I was like, mm. <laughs> Yeah, it melds a lot. It's gold as well. I think the astral is gold. I think gold. the gold is farther out. I think my astral is gold, and then my spiritual plane is pink. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. And white. Because that's... Because I was like, that's your ring. <laughs> uh-huh. Because astral is supposed to be one. Yeah. Uh-huh. Got you. So, all right. So that is your astral plane and it's supposed to be consistent with your heart chakra. Now, you have your spiritual plane, which is made up of the rest of the three or four, if you believe that there's eight main chakras like we do instead of seven. And they are made up of the etheric template, which is your higher physical aspect, which would be consistent with your... Um, Vishuddha chakra or your throat chakra which is supposedly blue in western thought and then the next one is your celestial body this is the sixth layer of your aura and it's farther out from your body I'm sorry I got lost and sidetracked there's so many things to figure out with auras but I just want you to guys to understand that each time we move out farther from the physical plane to the spiritual plane the aura colors get farther away from your physical body at yeah. least with clairvoyant perception and the celest the celestial body is also called your emotional aspect and is supposed to be consistent with your sixth chakra or your third eye chakra but we think that it would be your third eye yeah your third eye chakra um and that deals with you know higher spiritual consciousness blah, 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 blah. and then you have your last part of your aura that is a part of the spiritual plane and that is the casual body and it's also known as the uh, mental aspect and this is where em and i would say that with western thought that would be consistent with your seventh chakra or your crown chakra which is your sasahara chakra but for us with non-western thought it would be your bindu chakra which is your moon chakra as well as your crown chakra because those two chakras flow into each other so that's interesting. But see, the thing that bothers me, like you said, like four chakra. minutes ago, is what? well, one, people don't even want to talk about the moon chakra yeah. because they're like, one more step isn't commercialized enough. I can't make money off of it. But it's also, also transparent. It is transparent. So you wouldn't see it in an aura technically. Technically. But also that, um, I forgot what I was going to say now. Sorry. Darn it. (laughs) Dang, Aries. Oh, is that all of these chakras are supposed to, or all of your aura layers are supposed to be consistent with your chakras. So that in logical sense, at least, or normal logical sense would mean that the chakras that you see close to your body are supposed to be consistent with the colors of the chakra. So, you know, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, purple, violet. And you said you were listening to a podcast or something that was saying that they have to be that color. So if one is like a deep red, it means it's off balanced or something. Yeah. Or if it's a light red, then it's also off balance. It's supposed to be a consistent color. But also I listened to another um, podcast and through the interwebs that said that your first two um, aura layers, your etheric and your emotional body as well as your mental body. So the three that make up the physical plane are supposed to be first for your etheric body, which is supposed to be consistent with your Muldahar chakra, which is red. It's supposed to be gray. And then they said that the emotional body that's supposed to be consistent with your um, sacral or Svadhisthana chakra is supposed to be orange or yellow. And then your mental body, that's supposed to be consistent with your Manipur or solar plexus chakra, is supposed to be um, orange or yellow. But they said that when you see the first three layers, most people's first three layers are going to be gray, purple, and then yellow, which is not consistent with the chakras. Right. (laughs) So I'm like wholly confused. If somebody knows more about chakras than us, which is probably everybody, (laughs) probably nobody explain that to me like what is it supposed to be are the chakras supposed to be consistent with the chalk the are your auras are your your aura layers are your aura layers supposed to be consistent with the chakra colors or are they supposed to be different because i heard both of them and it doesn't make sense to me especially if you get into like reiki or medical healing of chakras medical healing of chakras there's air quotes sorry Mm. not to be rude i'm just saying there's a difference between scientific medicine and then spiritual medicine or 
homeopathy, whatever, holistic stuff. So if you know what it is, I just don't understand how with medical chakra healing, it's supposed to be consistent with the chakras, but then not because how are you supposed to figure out what's what and what's wrong and what's sick and how that happens? It just, it's too much. Yeah, you went on a lot of things that I got lost. <laughs> I just don't understand. Like, is it supposed to be consistent? Are the colors supposed to be consistent with your chakras since they're supposed to I think to that's match what up? people think, but I don't think that's how it is. Exactly. Because of what Agya has explained to you. Oh. Because if you are... Okay, so what Agya... Agya, if you guys don't remember... He is our spiritual advisor for our business. He is like a uh, a Sanskrit a Sanskrit man, and he helps us with learning the chakras because we are two Western women who uh Midwestern. Yeah, we <laughs> but str- we struggle. But <laughs> what he explained to Liv is that things do not things have to be in balance. But it's not that you have to balance your chakras is that you have to have an understanding of your chakras in order to shift the ener- energy centers of these chakra systems. He's saying most people want to have balance and consistency, and that's how they think that balance is gained, is through consistency and things being evened out. But he said there is no consistency in being the same. You have to find balance in the ebb and flow of life, and that is being able to raise one chakra when necessary and lower another one. But it's being able to have emotional intelligence about yourself in the situation that you're in to be able to manipulate your chakras and who you are to rise to the occasion and overcome whatever situation it is. So a lot of things in Western chakra thought as well as auras is like when we said at the beginning of the video, oh, your aura is really light red, so you need to fix it because that means it's unbalanced or it's too dark of a red, so it's also unbalanced and you need to do meditation or listening to high vibrational frequency music, which is stuff that I I learned while doing research for this. That's literally (laughs) what they said. It doesn't actually have anything to do with that. You need to understand that energy center and understand how to wield it. Yes. Like in Naruto. So it's not making sure that everything is the same across the board. It's being able to rise to the occasion and change your chakras when necessary. But that would explain why, like, you're seeing layers. I think the layers mean a a certain thing. So you have the physical plane, and that explains how your physical body is. You have the astral plane that is the literal, I don't know, you explained it, like the egg. So... You have the yolk, which is your physical plane, and then you have the membrane that is around the yolk, and that is your astral plane, and then... The yolk itself. The, like, egg white and yolk is your physical body. That's your physical body, and then there's a membrane around that, and that is your astral plane, and then the shell would be the uh, the spiritual plane. Well, I was doing the, uh, in science, I don't know if you guys ever did this in science class, but... To learn about semi-permeable membranes, there's something called um, osmosis (laughs) as well as balance in a semi-permeable membrane. It's basically on a scientific level trying to figure out balance between the inside of something and the outside of something. And the semi-permeable membrane is what allows things to flow through it so that on both sides of the semi-permeable membrane, there is balance. So when you, (laughs) in science, they make you like take an eggshell off basically through a chemical reaction it decalcifies it and what you're left with is just the little tiny thin clear membrane that is actually encapsulated underneath the calcium of the eggshell and you take that egg that's raw and you put it in maple syrup and what happens is um, water leaves the egg and maple syrup goes inside the egg so that the density or something on the inside and outside is the same and that's just basically what we were trying to talk about with M because I'm a psychic medium if you guys don't know and M is a psychic medium if you also don't know <laughs> and she's developing her abilities so we kind of talked about at the beginning of the podcast how she draws energy in through herself from the earth to channel spirits. Whereas when I channel spirits, spirits give me a lot of energy and I have to ground myself by releasing it through into the earth. But we have been thinking about our chakras and our auras because everyone wants us to make this video or a lot of people do. So we've been very pressured and like trying to think about it. And 
M has this ring around her that she's been talking to her spirit guide, Finea, about. And yeah. it has to do with her spirituality as a medium and her abilities. And her ring is pink, white, and gold. Right? Purple, yeah. white, purple white, and gold? It's pink, white, and gold. I am purple and gold. So, randomly, I just, when I started channeling spirits, would see this, like, bright white light that was encasing me and it was just a ring that was around me and it's about I don't know like six ish feet away from me so when we started doing our aura video I was like live is this like the astral plane of my aura and she was like no that is like the outer edge of your spiritual plane yes so when she explains this egg thing it kind of explains like how your aura is perceived in that sense, like how the layers work. Her astral plane or your astral planes are the semi-permeable mem membrane that allows spiritual energy to flow from your physical body through your spiritual plane. So when you got a hard-boiled egg and you take the shell off, you got that weird, nasty, clear thing in between the parts you want to eat and the shell. <laughs> yeah. and That M is the barrier. M the astral plane. Yeah. Yes. And M's astral plane is very far away and so is her spiritual plane but she always talks about me my spiritual plane is very close to my body it's um you said mine was purple right or is mine pink i don't remember which one your my your spiritual ring? plane yeah your ring is purple gold and white yes yes and that's my spiritual plane but it's very close to my astral plane which is gold <laughs> Yes, and mine's very far away, and it's because of how I relate to people is the same way I relate to, like, spiritual beings. And it's very much like I don't trust it because I'm afraid that people are going to hurt me, so I perceive people at a distance, and that is literally what is happening in my aura, whereas Liv is very trusting, so she has less of space between her and people or spiritual beings. Yes, and when I engage with other people the way that I feel safe in perceiving them is understanding them at like an intimate level yeah <laughs> and, I and don't I'm mean, like I need to know who you are before you can even get near me yeah and I don't mean that in like a sexual way obviously well, duh. <laughs> but yeah but some people are going to hear the word intimate and they're going to be like ee -hee -hee, like when we hear the word poop <laughs> doo doo a <F> fart <laughs> wow we, we had to get a fart joke in here somewhere oh for sure so my semi-permeable membrane or astral plane is very, very close to my body or physical plane. So if you guys don't know what it's like to be a medium, I'll, I I think it's funny because people are like, why are you called a medium? That's silly. <laughs> it's because I'm the physical body or media or medium in which spiritual energy flows out to communicate towards you or to you guys. So, But that also explains why you have to be born a medium because you have to be able to change that membrane in order to gain access to your spiritual self interesting because mine is green i have to get over the human physicality issues that i have and i'm not just gonna you know work on that and that's gonna happen that's why spiritual awakenings happen and that's why you can't control them because they are literally cracking your semi-permeal membrane well they're just <laughs> moving it and changing it that's all well i know but right now it can't it can't flow because i have that like barrier of that physicality and that's the barrier that we were talking about where m draws energy from the earth into her to try and push out the astral plane into her spiritual plane so that they can connect and she can get information into her physical plane which would be souls or spirits yeah. But that's why you manipulating can't just, your clairs. Yeah, that's why you just can't wake up and be like, you know, I'm just going to go learn to be a psychic medium. It's because you you literally have to have a life changing experience to crack your shell, essentially. <laughs> Eggs. Eggs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. So let's get into aura colors because this really gets me going, guys. It gets me going. So auras are just frequencies, right? Yes. And frequencies are how not only frequencies. Welcome to color theory. <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> this is what you learn when you're an art student. And do you learn it as a scientist? Yeah. We have to learn about wavelengths and frequencies and the different colors that exist at those frequencies. Well, so, guys, color is an illusion. 
because it's literally your perception of frequency. <laughs> yes. So in the scientific community, different colors exist at different frequencies. Red light is seen at the lowest frequency. Purple light or ultraviolet light is one of the highest frequencies, I believe. You'll have to, I'll have to check it, but it's consistent with what we're talking about, right? Well, it's the highest vibrational of visible light. Yes. Of what we can see. Of what we can see. So if your auras are just the emit, emit, emittance of electromagnetic frequencies from the particles that make up you, basically, so then the frequencies that you emit are consistent with the wavelengths that come off of you and the light that you see. So frequencies are perceptions of color and those frequencies that you are emitting are the frequencies of colors. They're they're one and the same. So your lowest frequency would be your root chakra, your Moldahar chakra, and that chakra is red. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So And your the warmer colors are the lower vibrational colors and those are the ones that are heavier which is why they appear on the bottom and then your higher vibrational colors are the cooler colors and those are higher vibrational so they appear further away from you yeah so like blues and purples whites things like that so the colors based off of what the internet says but again Mm -hmm. color is a perception i talked about this in the youtube video so i have like strawberry blonde hair and a lot of people like to tell me that it's red but i think it's more blonde than it is red, but other people are like dead set that it's red. And one of my favorite little like social experiments that I like to do <laughs> is dye my hair a little bit of a darker red because I think it's fun like in the fall time, you know, like spoopy season. And I think it's interesting. I like to count the people or keep track of the people that make a comment that I've I dyed realize. my hair and the ones that don't. Because the ones that don't, I will like remember Judge. who they are. <laughs> no. And I'll ask them, I'll be like, do you notice anything different about my hair? They're like, no, your hair is great. It always looks red. <laughs> so color theory, perception. perception. <laughs> so according to the internet, this is what the aura colors are. So red symbolizes energy, passion, strength, courage, physical activity, creativity, warmth, and security. But it's also associated with aggression. In the aura, red signifies materialism, materialistic ambition, a focus on sensual pleasures, and a quick temper. (laughs) Oh, God, I hate when they tell me what aura colors mean. So even though color is a perception, I perceive that the higher vibrational colors are going to relate to the higher vibrational chakras and vice versa. So with red, that would relate with your root chakra or your Muldahar chakra. And that is where you feel safe, secure, and whatever. So this is a very, like, grounded color. It's a very calm color. It it prevails, like, courageous, whatever. But it can also be aggressive because that is the thing that might make you secure again. Yeah. If you guys don't know, we have this in a podcast in a video that we talk about all the chakras in. But your Muldahara chakra deals with security and your like most basic primitive primal needs and if things aren't getting their most basic need met usually anger and aggression is what comes out because it's misdirected so it makes sense but again i just feel like if you're looking and seeing a color clairvoyantly or with a or a camera which we're also going to talk about then you could just see red and be like you're very passionate but maybe (laughs) they're not (laughs) because you don't know you're just looking at a color so i don't know All right, so orange. Orange symbolizes the individual's relationship to the external world, the needs and wants of the physical body, and the ways in which these are satisfied. The world of work. In healing, orange may increase immunity and sexual energy. (laughs) In aura, orange signifies thoughtfulness and creativity. So are these your emotions? Well, the next one is emotional maturity. Well, this is orange, so this is your sacral chakra. So, yes. So what does orange mean to you, though? It depends on the person that I'm reading because I don't just see colors. I also get clairsentient information. So if I see orange, it also depends on how that person is feeling. So for orange, I think it could be very consistent with creativity because once you have your Moldahar chakra in check or satisfied, you can have creativity because you're not worried about your needs. But if you don't have your Moldahar chakra 
met and you're anxious or angry about not being able to have things because if you guys don't know this human psychology for a second tidbit facts is when people are hungry the reason they get angry is because that is the brain's way of fueling the anger necessary to find food whether that be killing something to eat or getting something heavy enough to eat like tree Makes branches sense. or <laughs> grabbing Which potatoes out of the ground is like that yes um, so it could also be creativity in the sense of anger as well. So does orange deal with like our relationships to physical things in our world? Yes. Okay. Because I see orange in yours and I feel like it's because we're doing this right now. You're like putting your energy towards a business, creating a business. Yes. It's very material. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And orange also exists within the physical plane of your aura. Yeah, it also makes sense then. (laughs) (laughs) All right, yellow. Yellow symbolizes intellect, creativity, happiness, and the power of persuasion. It is also associated with cowardice. In healing, use yellow to promote clarity of thought. In the aura, yellow signifies intellectual development for either material or spiritual ends. This one you usually perceive as anxiety. Yes, but I feel like I can also perceive it as like a carelessness almost. Oh. Because if you think about it. Well, it's like your spirit guide, Shaggy. Shaggy's yellow. Yes. He is more like a golden, happy, healing yellow. Yeah. Yeah. That is the carelessness that I need to kind of embrace a little bit because I'm so grounded in my Moldahar. And it's not necessarily grounding for me with my Moldahar. It's more of like an anchor. An anchor can be safety, but can an, an, an anchor can also hold you down. I think it's like emotional responses to things. Yeah, because if you remember from the chakra stuff that we did, your chakra that deals with yellow is your navel chakra or your manipura yeah, chakra. Yeah, it deals with emotional intelligence. But you can't have emotions until you have the first two things met. Yeah, because mm-hmm. your spirit guides, I'm asking Shaggy. Or at least healthy emotions. And he's explaining it to me as like, you perceive it as anxiety normally because people are overwhelmed by emotions. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it makes a lot of sense now. Yeah. But when I get yellow in a positive sense, it's like the yellow sunshine in a meadow. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. Which is free flowing and Uh, freedom. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Green. Green symbolizes money, luck, prosperity, vitality, and fertility. It is also associated with envy. Green is the color of healing. It is beneficial in all healing situations. In the aura, green signifies balance, peace, and often indicates abilities as a healer. Which makes a lot of sense. So we said this earlier, green is the human or physicality sense of love. So it is everything that makes us human. Material things, yes. Which would make sense of why it indicates money, envy, why it indicates love to some people because that is love of physicality. It also makes sense as to why it is healing because it heals physicality. When I push energy onto things as well, which I've now learned is called Reiki, (laughs) usually when I want to heal things, even in a physical manner, I use golden light. And I think that's interesting that I'm learning that green can be healing, but it's green healing of the physical body. Yeah. Whereas gold is spiritual. It transcends that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And then I just never thought about it. So I'm going to have to try yeah. and see if I get different results of well, that's using why, green healing energy than gold. That's why there's different colors set for um, your physical plane versus your spiritual plane. Yes. So now we move on to blue. So let's recap really quick that yellow, orange, and red deal with your physical plane and your physical plane. Low vibrational colors. Yes. And the physical plane of your aura is created by your etheric or lower aspect color, the closest one to your body, your emotional body or your lower emotional aspect. And that deals with orange. And it is the second layer that is about three to five inches off of your body. And then your mental body or lower mental aspect of yellow that is about five to six, seven inches away from your body. Now we go on to green and green is your astral plane or your astral body and deals with the boundary between your physical self and your spiritual consciousness. Which makes sense because it's a transitional color. Yes, between material love and universal love. Between warm colors and cool colors. Yes. Now we're going to move on to the colors of your spiritual plane. And the first one is blue. 
Blue is the color of spirituality, intuition, inspiration, and inner peace. It is also associated with sadness and depression, a.k.a. the blues. In healing, blue is used for cooling and calming, both physically and mentally. In the aura, blue indicates serenity, contentment, and spiritual development. So again, like we have said, this indicates unconditional love because that is the gateway to connecting from the physical realm to the spiritual realm. And when I I guess in a lot of like spiritual senses, they say that once you are able to overcome your connected feelings towards the material world, you're allowed to have a sort of calmness, contentment, and serenity within the spiritual development of understanding that love is not conditional or bound by material things. It transcends. It also deals with the crown chakra because the crown chakra, it's about leaving human and physicality behind so that you can transcend. So that's why it is the difference between the green and the blue. Now we have indigo and indigo is going to be windigo, windigo, winnebago, winnebago, (laughs) winnebago. Uh, it's going to be consistent with your celestial body or your emotional aspect of the spiritual plane within the ring of your auras. So indigo is associated with psychic ability and healing. Use indigo for relaxation, reassurance, and promoting psychicism. That's interesting. Psychicism. Psychicism. <laughs> Orgasm. In okay. the aura, indigo <laughs> signifies a seeker often of spiritual truth. So indigo is... The throat chakra, isn't it? Yes, it's supposed to be. <laughs> but we think that it can be Bindu chakra as well as And that is often as spiritual truth. That's what you said, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Third eye. I don't know. Throat chakra. Windigo. Windigo. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> Purple. Purple. Yes. Is associated with power, both earthly and spiritual. In healing, purple is used for mental disorders and also for becoming one with spirit. In the aura, purple signifies higher spiritual development. Purple rings. <laughs> purple rings? Mine. Oh, yours is purple. Yes. Mine is not purple. It is pink. It's pink. As pink. As pink. But it's interesting because we're twin flames in our, like, I don't know, my normal aura is purple and gold, and her ring is purple and gold, and then her normal aura is pink and gold. And my ring is pink and gold. That's because the things that I hold close to me are different for things that heal me. And the things that you hold close to you are well, helping and healing for you. It goes into the law of attraction. That's the stuff I'm putting out. So I obviously <laughs> attracted that. Got and vice it. versa. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we have a strong bond because we are same, same, but different. I thought it's because we were trauma bonded. Someone put us in the back of the car well, and I mean, together and drove for a while. 100% that also happened, but... <laughs> it was called college. <laughs> 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 All right, now we move on to white. White is associated with truth, purity, cleansing, healing, and protection. It is a good he- general healing color for the removal of pain and suffering. In the aura, it signifies a high level of attainment, a higher level of soul incarnate to help others. White <laughs> is the strongest color or the strongest energy because it has it is unwielding. It's it deals faith. with faith. Yeah. But what's interesting, color theory by Emily is a uh, white uh reflects all colors. So that's why it is used for protection because it literally pushes the rest of the energy away from you and that's why people use that to protect themselves. Yeah. Interesting. Well, cuz if If you're sick, whether it's emotionally or physically, it's usually because other energies are getting muddled in your own. So if white pushes those energies out, it cleanses what you are. Right. And that's why white deals with with purity. Got it. Mm -hmm. I didn't think about that when we made the YouTube video. Oh, yeah. Okay. (laughs) Moving on to gold. Gold represents understanding and luck. Remember, though, that nothing comes from nothing. It is the most powerful healing color, but so powerful that many are not able to stand it initially and must be conditioned to it via other colors. In the aura, it represents service to others. That's why my astral plane is gold. Because I'm medium. My information isn't about me. It's about spirit and helping you. Yeah, gold is a spiritual he- healing, whereas green is physical healing. Yeah. But it's service to others. Well, yeah, because it can't be about you because that would be 
physicality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Sorry, I also didn't get that when they were telling me that it was oh, gold. But that's why it's so hard to like do because we're we're reading the uh the Reiki meanings for the colors. And that's why it's so hard to do because it's not about you. It's not about the person you're doing. It's about everything. Which is why my go to is gold for healing. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Um now we have pink. I also love pink for healing. Pink and gold are my go-to for trying to make other people feel better. Um, pink represents unconditional love, love requiring nothing in return. It is also the color of friendship and conviality. In the aura, it signifies balance between the spiritual and the material. We literally, this was the beginning of the podcast, remember? You <laughs> said, what color is my aura now? And I said, it's actually pink. Yes. <laughs> I'm aware. Ah, oh, friendship. Oh, God. Best friends forever. Twink. Twink. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty um pretty cringe. easy. Oh, okay. Not cringe. I love you. Okay. Cringe. Brown. <laughs> Brown. Brown is the color of the earth and represents practicality, material success, concentration, and study. In the aura it indicates down to earthness and common sense. Yeah, brown is not actually a color. It is a combination of many colors. Mm -hmm. So it reflects multiple colors, which m it reflects all of them, essentially. It reflects red, blue, and yellow, the primary colors, and that's what gives you brown. So that's why it is grounding, because it's literally everything just mushed together. <laughs> Oh, I didn't think about it that way. Yes. I never had to take art classes because I Color played Color theory. <laughs> they teach you it every year. Like, you didn't remember it in the first place. Yeah, I didn't. Nope. No, I just RGBIV. Yeah. I don't know what that means. I yeah. just remember learning it in, like, elementary school. And then once I hit sixth grade, I played an instrument. So I was in <laughs> band, not art class. Yes. So. How color works is color is frequency. And they are wavelengths. So they're literally going in a straight line. And when they hit objects, whatever the color the object is, it's going to reflect those light waves. So if something is red, it is going to reflect red and absorb everything else. So that's, so that's why you're seeing red, because that is what's being put into your eyes. Rods and cones, my dude. And that's why when things perceive as white, it reflects all of the waves. When something is perceived as black, it absorbs all of the waves. So it is literally the absence of color. Black is not a color. All right. Which brings us to black. <laughs> <laughs> Unlock your phone. Wow. Wow. Keeps letting my phone lock. Yep. Okay. Black, as M so graciously, graciously said. said Black is the absence of color. It represents the unconscious and mystery. We know. Its visualization can help promote deep meditation. Black also stands for evil. Wow. Black magic. It's drama. Evil. Lemons. <laughs> Lemons. <laughs> in the aura, it signifies some kind of blockage or something being hidden, which in our video we talked about how most dark things present as black and we tell you what is the best way to deal with dark things it's not when in doubt sage it out it when is when in doubt sage it out <laughs> you haven't heard that no <laughs> it is not in fact when in doubt sage it out like a white girl putting Please on don't do Uggs that <laughs> to get a pumpkin spice latte at starbucks it's just gonna absorb that <laughs> it's that you need to ignore it and not give it your energy because as em just said black is the absence of color it is all of the colors being drawn absorbed. into nothing so black things present or dark things present as black because they are there to absorb your energy. That is why they are black. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, it makes so much sense. But yeah, it also deals with trauma. Um, a lot of people don't like to see their trauma, which is why it turns black because you don't necessarily have a feeling about it. It's just something that affects you. You shut and it, it off. it absorbs everything that you are. Yes. So that's a little bit about uh, the colors. Yeah, because everybody actually, asks about colors. All the time. But again, colors are perceptions. Now, the next thing that everybody asks about is how do I see auras? <laughs> yeah, how do you see auras? Can you teach me how to see auras? It's very important that I see auras. Yes, and if you don't know, we also have our Claire, Claire video, which tells you all about the Claire's. And podcast. And podcast. And it's called the Claire on our podcast. The Claire's. And it, people, <laughs> when they... 
this is the only thing I found on the internet. The only thing that they said on how to talk or not talk, how to perceive auras is really? clairvoyantly. And clairvoyance, if you don't know or are new to the podcast, is that it is seeing, clear seeing, whether that be in front of you, which is mostly how people want to perceive clairvoyance, but it's also seeing things within your mind's eye or in your head. So if I were to say, imagine a taco, you can kind of visualize a taco if you have the that ability type of to thought see process. things in your head. Yes, because some people don't, they're not, they don't see things in their mind's eye. They can't envision They can't things. picture things. No, which is fine. People think things differently. Some people don't even have an inner monologue. They only th- think of things clairvoyantly and claircognizantly. So yeah. clear thoughts, mm-hmm. which blows my mind because I have a really I, obnoxious inner monologue. <laughs> yeah, I still don't understand how people read without an inner monologue. I know. That's why Bradley struggles with reading. I know. I need someone to come tell me if you do not have an inner monologue, what happens in your brain when you read things? Do you associate full words with pictures? Yeah. Like, do you see pictures? Do you just know what it says? Like, I'm like, I don't know how you do that. It blows our mind. It's great. It's super cool. <laughs> Yeah. I really want to know. <laughs> the human mind is awesome. But anyways, most people on the internet or anywhere will tell you that the way you perceive auras is only clairvoyantly. And the way that they tell you how to do this, these are the three things that they told me. A big squint. <laughs> big squint. Big squint. That's what Emily calls me, the big squint. A big squint. I'm really Because <laughs> her glasses are so thick and she still squints through them. Oh, God. She's like, look at this. And then she... And then she starts squinting and I'm like, oh, God, you can't see. <laughs> so according to the internet, you can only see auras clairvoyantly. And we're going to get into how that's not true. But yeah, guys, I just figured out actually how to perceive auras. So in a different way. Yeah. So according to the internet, if you want to clairvoyantly perceive auras, one, you can do an aura camera, which we're going to talk about. But two is go into your bathroom <laughs> with either low light or bright light and stare at yourself in the mirror. And eventually supposedly You'll see bloody mary <laughs> sorry bloody mary bloody mary bloody mary well um You'll start seeing colors around your face or around your body. You'll start seeing the layers, most prominently probably the physical plane. But if you see all seven or eight planes, but let us know. Is that actually real or is it just your mind trying to get information? So there is something in the psychology world. I forget what the actual term is, but it's been proven that if you guys don't know this, when you are looking at things, you aren't seeing the actual object as a whole itself that's too complicated for your brain to do but think of it like a computer screen all of the images that are whole within a computer image are actually pixelations put together to make one whole image well your brain works the same way your brain takes pixelated images or which is the like the waves of light yes to collect in your mind and then your eyes make those pixelated images but what your brain does is it basically processes the processes those pixelations and puts them into a clear concise image so there is a psychological phenomenon that has been tested that if you sit in a dimly lit room for the long enough amount of time and stare at yourself in a mirror your brain gets too underwhelmed by seeing the same thing so since your brain needs to keep seeing things and doing things in order to continue it needs stimulation but if you don't give it that stimulation in your environment he'll create it it does so a lot of the things around like the Bloody Mary, um, I don't know, myth, myth or <laughs> nursery rhyme, nursery rhyme, spooky stuff, whatever <laughs> that stuff is. The Candyman. Candy All man. of it. Candyman. 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 Go on. You forgot one more. Candyman. <laughs> <laughs> is that when you go into a room such as a bathroom and you're ninth grade sleepover with all of your friends and say bloody mary in a dimly lit room and you're all like freaked out on adrenaline already and have these preconceived notions of what you're going to see based on the lore itself is that your brain puts those together for you because if you stare in the mirror for long enough you're going to start seeing what your brain is already like contracting subconsciously to give your mind that stimulation that it needs so it's, it's also common with people who are blind their brain wants stimulation, so they essentially see fireworks. Or like when your eyes are closed, a lot of times you will see colors. Mm-hmm. It's because your brain constantly is looking for stimulation. Yes. So that can also be one of the clairvoyant debunking of 
seeing auras. The, the big squint. The big squint. <laughs> <laughs> Can you please put that in Asana too? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tam, Tam, Tam. We are going to, the other thing that you can do is, I guess, put your hand up against a very blank or neutral wall and do the big squint at your hand and <laughs> see it. Squint. And then the next one is like, uh, they tell you to like, rub your hands together and then like pull them apart give and yourself some to, like, indian rub burn yeah i told emily i'm like come here give me your arm we're gonna indian rug burn some auras off your arm we'll see all the colors <laughs> 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 so those are the ways that they tell you to see auras there's also like meditation and stuff like that and yada 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 but here's how we're gonna tell you you can actually do it yes so as a psychic medium I don't walk around and see auras all the time because I don't, I tell spirit, I don't like seeing things in front of me clairvoyantly. I am a mental medium. So try to show it to me, you know, in the least spooky way possible. And I want everyone to to show me things in the most spooky way possible. Yeah. See if I get spooked. And we talk about in our other videos and other podcasts that everybody, if you're not a psychic medium, you still have psychic abilities to an extent. And those abilities are unique to you so somebody may have really great clairaudience but their clairvoyance isn't really cool other people are super clairvoyant but their clairaudience sucks it's all different to you and the way those clairs come into you are also very unique everybody is different your psychic abilities are like a fingerprint okay so for me i am very well, I have all of the Claire's, but... <laughs> Your strongest Claire is clairvoyance, though. It is clairvoyance. Because I also have all of the Claire's, but it is a lot easier for me to get information clairaudiently as sounds. <laughs> yes. So, if you don't just walk up to somebody and see auras, that is okay. That is normal. That is fine. Just because someone says that the only way that you can see auras on the internet is clairvoyantly outside outwardly, then fooey on them because that's dumb and it's restricting your psychic abilities so we're here to tell you that these are the ways that you can also perceive auras as well so when i see auras i see the physical auras but i guess i see all of them too yeah (laughs) she thought i only see three colors usually they are really close to your body and then she started like actually thinking about it and then it was like wait a second i see all of them i just didn't know it was that (laughs) my medium hat because again that's how i keep myself sane guys all of the people that give me schizophrenic comics and stuff like that i am able to control it to an extent so one of the ways that i help mediate information is through being a mental medium and telling spirit hey i only want to see things this way i also have boundaries don't tell me things unless it's necessary so i'm not going to see auras all the time unless you ask me Right. I have to put my mental mind frame into that to be able to focus on it, which is how M kind of says, you know, she goes into a meditative state, which I didn't think was true, but I guess it it kind of is. Yes, because a meditative state is literally a focus and clearing your mind to just focus on that one thing. So when you are speaking to souls, you have to get out of the way. So you have to get your conscious mind out of the way. Otherwise, you're going to fill in the blanks. So she just focuses on the energy that she's speaking with and they tell her things. That yeah. is meditation. So for me as a psychic medium, when I perceive auras, I see them 99% or like 95% within my mind's eye. So you don't necessarily have to be there for me to to just have an aura reading because I've done it a couple times during psychic medium readings where I've looked at someone's aura and they are really excited about it. But for M, I see auras in different portions of the body. So right now, when I first saw her this morning, I saw that her hands from the elbow down to her fingertips were yellow and green. Um, and that, for me as a psychic medium, tells me that the things that she, a lot, it's really silly because spirit never really tells you things in like a straight way. <laughs> it's very much like schwami stuff, which is annoying. It's very symbolistic and things. Mental charades. Yes. So my interpretation of seeing from the elbow down that her hands were yellow and green is that yellow, she's anxious about something because I could feel it clairsentiently, her anxiety. And green is material love and material things and the attachment towards the material world. So I'm like, why is she anxious about material love and things? And it's also because when I saw 
that it's from the elbows down. That's like gloves, basically. And it's not only things that she touches within the physical world, but it's things that touch her from the physical world, which is interesting. Which makes a lot of sense. But then if I look at her feet or it's mostly like I don't even have to look at you. You're just sitting next to me. I can look away from you and focus on your body. And when I focus on your body, I see that your the soles of your feet are red and from your knees down, it's gray. Yeah. But I can also see that from your knees up to your hips is orange and your hips themselves are actually blue and yellow. Interesting. And you have a lot of green within your your trunk. So like... The stomach area. Which is why uh, when you walked in this morning. I felt sick. That's where it hurt. Is your heart (laughs) and Uh, your stomach, your chest. Yeah. Which is interesting. And you have a lot of orange around your neck and shoulders. Stress. Uh, (laughs) So it's just interesting. But that's how I see things. And I'm not even looking at you, right? Yeah. I don't think you need to. No. Um, But I see those clairvoyantly in my mind's eye, but I also get feelings associated with them, which is why I get so annoyed when people are like, what are my aura colors mean? (laughs) And it's like this really dumb general thing because now in addition- it's a lot more complex than this is what this color means. (laughs) Yes. So in addition to seeing clairvoyantly what your aura is right now, which can change- Please don't let anyone ever tell you that your aura is always the same because it's not. It's very consistent with your emotional and physical well-being as well as your spiritual well-being or state. And um, when I get those colors, when I see them, now clairsentiently, which is clear feeling, I can feel emotion-wise what those colors are associated with. So your green, I felt was associated towards love, but it was a very grounding feeling of love, which tells me that it's material things. Now your yellow, I could feel anxiety. And then the anxiety was staticky around the green. So I can tell that it is a focused around. My yellow is always anxiety. <laughs> it's always, it's <laughs> focused around the green. Yeah. So that's how I'm clairsentiently perceiving those colors. Now, right. M has told me that in like holistic homeopathic medicine or something, people will use clairvoyant abilities of seeing people's auras and say that they'll see holes in people's auras. And yes. that is where there's a medical or physical affliction or condition that yes, is ailing it that person. Would make sense because your body is full of chakra centers. It's like Naruto where they explain the chakra system. Neji, who is a character in Naruto, has the ability to use his chakra to shut off the energy centers within other people's bodies. And they call them chakra centers. And the way that they explain them in um, in Naruto is that they're all throughout your body and they kind of look like the nervous system or like your veins throughout your body. But the big ones are the ones that are within your center. Those are your eight main chakras. But what would be relating to like knowing where your like issues are is where the chakra center isn't giving off the same amount or the normal amount of energy so that would be perceived as a whole so if you have like hip problems that part of your body the energy center is going to be off so you would be able to technically perceive it clairvoyantly clairaudiently whatever But that's where it gets into the different perceptions of that chakra. So clairvoyantly, people might see holes in someone's chakra if you clairvoyantly see chakras. But if you are clairsentient, you could feel the emotion towards that color that you might see clairvoyantly. Or you might feel where the hole is in that person's aura field because you feel where their physical ailment is, whether that's emotional or physical. So for me, sometimes when I'm doing readings, whether it be a soul or a psychic reading that I'm talking to an animal or a person, I will get physical feelings of where they have those medical or physical ailments. So that's a different way of perceiving your aura or the energy associated with that area in the body, clairsentiently. Now, Claire audience how to perceive auras clear audiencely so auras again are just frequencies the electromagnetic frequency in which your body gives off but what else are frequencies sound sound is a frequency now this gets into things like synesthesia there are different types of synesthesia you can have taste synesthesia you can have clear uh, audio or audient synesthesia where like people hear certain sounds or words and it makes them Think of colors. 
Yeah, that's been happening to me. So, and that's how I was able to read uh, Liv Zora because I am stronger with clairaudience than I am clairvoyance because I question clairvoyance. So essentially I hear the colors coming off of her because the lower vibrational colors have a low hum and the higher vibrational colors have a high hum. Like gold, I feel like you have a lot of gold associated with you, but it sounds like like pixie dust because <laughs> it's so high pitched. Whereas like... A red is kind of more, you almost aren't able to hear it because it's like a rumbling sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Clear audience perception of auras. So I, if you guys have any like Clair Gustin or Clair Alien, which is taste and smell perception of auras, that would be interesting. What if I just walked up to you and licked your arm and was like, you feel like yellow. <laughs> wow. That's disgusting. <laughs> you know, I would Wait, too. Do you have a hole in your energy field? Is it over your heart? Not yes. your heart chakra, but over your heart. Yes. It's like up through your shoulder too. That's why my shoulder hurts all the time and my heart hurts. Yeah, because when I listen to your chakra, I can hear like whooshing of wind throughout your entire body. But when it, you go to your heart, there's like a, like it's blowing away mm -hmm. instead of in a, in a circle. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> Explaining sounds <laughs> yeah. visually. I think I need to have a physical because I want to make sure that I don't have anything wrong with my heart because a lot of the times I feel like I'm having a heart attack <laughs> and it's like a couple times a week or a couple times a day that my heart will hurt and it goes into my shoulder and down my left arm. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm seeing. <laughs> I know. It happens a lot. Because at first I was like, well, that's weird because your heart chakra is like really full, but at the same time, your heart chakra is not in the same spot as your physical heart. Yeah. It's to the left of my sternum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's where your hole is. You're welcome. And she can hear it. Yeah. I can hear where her hole is in her chakra. But can so, you, you know, but you know the color. What? The color of your hole? Mm-hmm. Oh, got you. Because it's golden, right? There's a lot of, I don't know. I feel like there's golden in your head. It's a lot of blue as well. <laughs> as she can't breathe. <laughs> yeah. As I read my own chakra. Um, so those are the different ways that you can perceive chakras with your other Claire. So please don't let the internet or other people tell you that clairvoyance is the only way in which you can perceive chakras or auras. Because that's what we're talking about. They're pretty, pretty similar. Are you putting the gold there? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, God. I think it has to do with my past lives as well as myself. I feel like you're trying to put it in spaces that you need healing. Probably. Because I don't, like, the energy that is just you doesn't sound like gold. It sounds lower vibrational because it's taking a toll on you. Probably. I'm so a Leo. It's, it's more like brown grounding mm -hmm. yeah i'm aware you're welcome <laughs> thank you for psycho chakra or aaron analyzing listening me. to your aura <laughs> is so weird <laughs> that could be our thumbnail for our video yeah i, I can, can hear auras <laughs> <laughs> screw western thought <laughs> yeah we're all about the inclusion here guys i hope we're blowing your mind let us know um because i'm blowing my own mind i didn't i think, know like we started I, talking about this and this we were like this is malarkey guys i really did not want to do a chakra video because i'm so annoyed an by how video. many yeah i did not want to do an aura video because of how annoying people are with how it sometimes much people don't understand it or just are just yeah it just makes me angry i'm like don't just let put people a lot of like fine you things yeah yeah a lot of physical things onto yeah. it. exactly yes um so Let's get into the physical aspect. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into the cameras, my dude. <laughs> All right. So, aura cameras. So wait, first off, how much is an aura camera and can I buy one? Okay. I literally sent you an Adobe attachment. Uh, I know, but I don't think there were cameras on there. You also It was how to use Adobe to take wait, aura what? pictures. That's why I sent it to you, dummy. Yeah, but it was really long. I was half <laughs> asleep this morning. Aries looks at it, disregards it, throws <laughs> it into fire pile. Continues well, how do doing... I take pictures of people's auras? It's very important. I found, a, okay, obviously, okay, okay, I found okay. a thing that said that it did auras, but I also- We'll link that for I think you. we can make our own. Let's do it and we'll make a video about it. About making our own aura camera? Yes. Fuck yes. Yes. Down. <laughs> it's happening. Put it in the thing. You have my phone. Darn it. <laughs> 
Ugh, I can't wait till we hire our person because she's going to be here with all of our podcasts. And, and I'm just going to tell her to write things down <laughs> at all times. At all times. Because that's what we need. Our ADHD brains need someone to actually take the things, the fucking shit that Document comes out of our, our mouth. Things. Yes. <laughs> okay. What did you just say? <laughs> Fuck. Wait, hang on. We can replay it. Aura cameras. Ah! Oh, okay. <laughs> Emily wrote it down. It's okay. <laughs> so... What is an aura camera? All right. An aura camera is a normal camera. But in addition to the normal camera, what it does is, okay, so we have, we already have devices in which we can, um, what is it? Uh, record electro- electromagnetic fields. Yes. Which is why it's funny that we literally, like paranormal people use EMF readers to perceive souls. And we were like, let's add a camera aspect to it. My dude. My dude. So- you take a, basically an EMF reader or the data of the EMF reader and you take a picture. And not only does the picture, the camera, take a picture of your body, but the EMF portion of the camera records the electromagnetic frequencies in relation to your body. And then it has applications and like algorithms that associate the electromagnetic frequencies that it catches when it takes the photo and then they overlay the camera image with the electromagnetic frequencies that the little adaptation like the little data box converts the energy frequency into the corresponding colors yeah so you and have then overlays it over the image so you have your photosensitive that just gives you a regular picture but you also have the electromagnetic fields picture image laid over top of it so yes. that's why you're able to perceive both of them yes which is wild so that's yeah how it's insane that they were able to photograph auras and i want one of these cameras <laughs> just for the sole fact of i love cameras yeah <laughs> um but then i also found something that's a little more in depth about um Aura perceiving photography yes so there's somebody it's something called Car- Karelian photography k-i-r-l-i-a-n photography and it's this person at ucla um in like the 1960s that used polaroid cameras to photograph the energy field around living objects but it was debunked because or supposedly debunked because what they would do is they would take a leaf and image it like photograph it and what they were basically doing is photographing the energy field around the leaf. But when they would remove the leaf or a piece of the leaf, an image would still photograph. So they take a leaf, take a fancy oh. Polaroid picture of it. And then once they removed the leaf. So the would, energy was still there, but the piece of the leaf was gone. Yes. God. So that's why they thought they had something. So if I cut my arm off, would you be able to still see the energy from my arm I could where it was. photograph it using oh. Karelian photography you try it? <laughs> and have an outline of your arm according to Karelian photography Jesus Christ. but when the scientists got a hold of it mm-hmm. outside of the um, parapsychology lab at UCLA in the 1960s what they did is once they removed the leaf instead of just automatically taking another picture what they did is they wiped down the surface that the leaf was sitting on and once they took a picture after getting rid of any type of particulate debris that the naked eye couldn't see the leaf image was gone so they attributed Karelian photography and the quote-unquote essence or chi or aura that the photography was able to pick up to something called coronial discharges and that sounds really gross but what it is in essence is everything like we've been saying emits an electromagnetic frequency because it has particles. But there's like an atmosphere around the living thing. And the electricity or EMF that the physical object gives off is basically, it varies depending on the atmosphere or the environment that you're in. Because when electricity goes off of your body, what they're catching is the electrons or particles coming the electron they're capturing the energy that's coming off of what off of the physical object but it's yeah. being um it's <laughs> it's being 
what is it? Like, I'm trying to think of the word. <sighs> it's being manipulated by the atmosphere around you. So electricity travels in water fast, right? Right. The atmosphere holds water. So if you take the water out of the object, then the image is is altered. So when they they took pictures, the Karelian photography, they took images of the leaf. And what they did was they would let the leaf sit out. And as it withered away and got drier because mm-hmm. water was being evaporated from it and it was dying, the image of the little outline around it, the aura or chi around it was also diminishing. Gotcha. And they thought it was because the life source of the leaf was diminishing. So therefore the aura got lighter. But what it was is it was directly linked to the water in that thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Which is why when they got rid of the water left over on the desk from the faint image of the leaf, it disappeared. That makes sense. So they're saying that auras aren't actually linked to the electromagnetical field or electro... Why do I keep saying electromagnetical? Electromagnetic field of the body. It's not just that. It's also linked to water and the water in the atmosphere and the electrons that flow through the water. It's affected about how the electromagnetic field uh, interacts with whatever it's in. Yeah. But it also makes sense. You were talking about how if you remove a piece of the leaf that it's still there. You, have you ever heard of phantom limb syndrome? Yes. Wouldn't that be like that? Because you also, you have your spiritual self that's trying to fit itself into this like little human body. So that would make sense as to why your body still thinks there is an arm there because it can literally feel the energy from it there. Yeah, because I the reason I like to say that I can talk to souls or the way I like to rationalize it is that... With the third law of thermodynamics, it states that energy is neither created nor destroyed. It just is. It's converted from one form to the next, and it's finite. Energy is finite in this universe. It's never increasing nor decreasing. That's why it goes from one source to the next. But I like to say that the reason I can talk to souls is because souls exist. We are not just a physical body. There's a separation between our physical body and our soul. So if your soul has been so used to having an arm... (laughs) in its physical body and then you get rid of it it's like oh it's supposed to be there which is probably why you feel it your soul is like it's supposed to be there it still feels the electromagnetic pull of your arm because you will feel pain in something that is not there crazy yeah i wonder if you can take pictures of people who like don't have an arm if they have an arm in their aura that would be cool. Uh, yeah, it would. <laughs> a Karelian <laughs> photograph of somebody that didn't have an arm? Yeah. Well, and see it, if it's, there's an energy field for it. Yeah, but if you're... Okay, well, if science is true mm-hmm. and you get rid of that, there wouldn't be any residual water to manipulate the photo if it's been gone for that long of a time. Yeah, but there's also... They're a living being, so they don't just have their physical physicality. Yeah, but I'm saying... Science disproved Carillion photography because they wiped off the surface. So if someone doesn't have an arm and they haven't had an arm for a long time. They need to try it with a body. (laughs) Oh just someone's arm off. Cut my arm off. Oh my god. And then we'll just be like, okay, is it still there? Yeah, but does water really matter if I'm a living being with a soul? I don't know. You're gonna sacrifice your arm. Maybe a toe. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm sorry. That's a little crazy. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. There's actually a, a mental um, disorder in which people feel that they need to cut their limbs off. Yeah, that's not me. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. For science. For science. If someone wants, to, no. We're, so where we're can I get a, a camera? Stop. Where can I get an aura camera? And can and is it expensive? We're gonna build an aura camera. I don't believe you. <laughs> uh, we, we put it in a sauna. The task management has spoken. Okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Another Patreon tier. If we get enough Patreon people, we're going to build an aura camera. Guys, <laughs> we're starting a Patreon on Halloween. And we're going to offer exclusive services just to our Patreons. And one of those services is going to be aura readings wing readings, and spirit guide readings. And all three of those are going to be paired with your lovely M drawing them for you. <laughs> You're also at the lowest Patreon tier as a sidekick. You will be, you'll have access to Metapsychics Pens Pals, which is going to be really excited. Which is our Discord server. So you'll have a chat room with other people of the same interest. 
so that you're able to like validate your own experiences and talk through them so that you can I don't know better your spiritual gifts and understand them and not be invalidated for them because that's dumb it's literally how em and i have all of our spiritual spankings happen yeah because we literally talk about them and then our spirit guides are like you're wrong <laughs> it's actually this and we're like no yeah. shit <laughs> because we don't want to be like on the internet telling you how it is we want you guys to like figure it out with your spirit guides because that's Cause how it's, it's supposed to be yeah so guys did you like what you hear if you did Maybe subscribe to our podcast, download it again, become all of our friends, because that's what all, this is what Metapsychics is about. Okay, so on the internet, I have Aura Unlimited 1080p HD webcam. Wait, this is a webcam? <laughs> we're building one, we're not going to buy one. <laughs> well, uh, we're, we're thinking about streaming, my dude. We could stream our aura. That might be like some trippy shit. And see how it changes as you play scary video oh games. Oh my god, that'd be so cool. Make sure you guys uh join our Patreon. We have a goal on there to reach so many patrons and we're gonna hire someone so that we can do spoopy streaming with you guys. Yeah. I'm we're really getting, excited about it. We're getting to that point where we need help to keep making content content. So we don't need help. We just uh wanna make more of it. <laughs> yeah. Well we need help. So So we're also really excited for you guys to uh, create a community on our Patreon. So, yeah. An Halloween! An inclusive, great community where everyone can talk about their spiritual things. It's great. It's going to be awesome. But next video and podcast, what are we talking about? Well, we haven't decided yet, but they're all Halloween themed. So, like, the scariest moment as a, ho as a psychic medium. Um, we might go to, like ghost hunting things um we're also going to talk about famous haunted places and actually talk to the spirits there i'm just probably going to push my medium abilities. oh yeah i'm gonna make a live uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> i'm not looking forward to it because it's halloween we gotta be spoopy i don't like spoopy things but it's halloween mm. it warrants it no so if you guys are interested in that content make sure to subscribe i think you can do that on podcasts also Make sure you subscribe onto YouTube and make sure you check out our Patreon when we go live on Halloween. We, yeah. You can find us on TikTok, <laughs> Instagram, Facebook, Spotify, the YouTubes. Also, you can book a reading. Oh, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> you know. <laughs> if you so choose, you can go on to metapsychics.com. Give us your stories about auras, too. Guys, we're doing listener videos. Uh, listener video one came out. The episode before this so go listen to our listener story they're super spoopy super awesome it's great you guys had awesome stories and we want more yeah so tell us how you that, perceive auras because that'd be awesome yes if we blew your mind and you can clairaudiently perceive auras it blew my mind we're gonna lose our shit we need to know so you can go to metapsychics.com and hit the extras tab <laughs> extras tab and submit your stories to us and be featured in a next listeners video but it until also then it also can be uh, scary, scary stories if you want to do paranormal stuff instead of auras. But, well, you yeah. know. Anything you guys want. Anything paranormal, metaphysical, spiritual, spoopy. But until then, we are your meta-sa-kicks. Wow. <laughs> <laughs>